Hi everyone, so if you are my friend or you follow this channel already, you will know that last year I lost a ton of weight. Uh, I went from this to this in 97 days, <clears throat> which is pretty incredible because uh, I lost uh, 13 kgs. I went from almost 30% body fat to 16. <clears throat> but the crazy thing about that weight loss was that uh, 8 kg of it was in the first 24 days, all right? And what I did was I ate the carnivore diet, which was uh, meat, eggs, cheese, and uh, you know, just uh, no vegetables, no fruits, <clears throat> just cutting out all carbohydrates, right? So they put my body in a state of ketosis. Now, eight kgs in 24 days is absolutely insane because it's like basically not eating. Uh, I calculated my uh, calories, right? My output and input. So I measured everything I ate and uh, uh, calculated how much calories I burnt from my exercise. <coughs> and I was only running just under 500 calorie deficit a day, right? And for people who know, uh, a pound of body fat is 3,500 calories, which means I should have only lost one pound of body fat a week. I lost way more than that. Now, out of the eight kilos I lost in the first 24 days, three kilos would have been water because of glycogen, right? Glycogen, for those who don't know, is uh, a polysaccharide that animals uh, have to store the sugar that they've eaten, right? So you, if you eat uh, carbohydrates, the uh, insulin will convert the blood sugar into your muscle and your liver's uh, and uh, uh, the glucose becomes <coughs> glycogen, but that holds water. So um, the amount of glycogen I had for a guy my size should have been, uh, should have been holding about three kilos of water, all right? So five kilos of body fat was lost in 24 days, all right? Which is absolutely insane. And it means that I was losing more weight than I should have based on just calorie counting and uh, it made me uh, study it more and I discovered there's another model called the carbohydrate insulin model uh, especially related to obesity and uh, in the description below on this YouTube video I would have put a link of an Australian doctor who explains this very clearly how uh, he had uh, patients who were exercising, trying to eat right, but they could not drop their body weight because their body was already insulin resistant. So they were eating so much sugar and carbohydrates that constant uh, insulin spiking meant that uh, their body was no longer responding to their own insulin, which means when they started trying to cut weight, because they still had carbohydrates in their diet, they were still producing a lot of insulin, but still resistant to the insulin. And insulin blocks the ability to burn body fat, right? So they could not burn the body fat. They were dropping their calories. They were exercising, but they could not cut the body fat. And with this doctor in this video, as soon as he made his patients insulin sensitive again, they dropped weight super fast, all right? So with me, on my weight loss, when uh, I became insulin sensitive again uh, as a result of eating the carnivore diet. I just dropped weight super, super fast, right? Uh, that's as a result, not only of the caloric deficit, but because of regaining insulin sensitivity. So there's a lot of interesting signs that I discovered during my weight loss and trying to get healthy again. And another thing I discovered was that fasting if you do a prolonged fast, not just intermittent fasting, <coughs> if you do a prolonged fast at 48 hours, so it progressively gets higher, right? So after 24 hours, your human growth hormone will start going up. And at 48 hours, it will spike to uh, a maximum amount, which on average would be five times higher than uh, what a normal person's baseline would be. And human growth hormone is a very interesting hormone because it helps cellular growth and uh, healing. It's what uh, allows kids to grow. And uh, if you're an adult and you inject a growth hormone, which a lot of bodybuilders, uh, MMA fighters, 
powerlifting uh, people, athletes do when they get injured is it uh, allows them to heal quicker. Obviously, bodybuilders will abuse it and then they get something called a bubble gut because the growth hormone is causing their, their organs, their intestines to get even bigger and it pushes out their belly. And actually, the head gets bigger, which is why I will never take growth hormone because I already have a big head, right? I don't need a bigger head. So, I'm going to test my growth hormone uh, because after I drop my weight, in the five weeks following my lowest body weight in uh, 20 years, I uh, was 87 and a half kg there. I, uh, I started eating uh, trash again. Now, my three meals were still very clean, healthy meals, right? I stopped eating the carnivore diet, but I was, I was eating uh, like a pretty much uh, uh, high protein, high animal fat, uh, lots of eggs, uh, very little carbohydrate diet in my three meals, but I was still snacking on uh, chocolate, ice cream, and potato chips. Okay, just snacks, like a couple of snacks a day. And that caused me to gain five kilos in uh, five weeks, all right? I put back a lot of the weight. Uh, again, I can hold three kilos of water in my body, so uh, two kilos of body fat and three kilos of water I put back in just five weeks. So I'm going on a cut again, and I'm gonna test out this fasting thing again with um, my growth hormones because I've actually tested my growth hormones spiking before when I was doing fasting, when I was, uh, when I was on my diet before, when I was losing weight. And after 34 hours, my uh, uh, growth hormone level had already gone 30% higher than the upper limit of a normal human being. So uh, I want to see how much it's going to go up by this time around at 48 hour mark. And this should be an interesting experiment. Um, so this would be part of uh, a bigger uh, group of videos that I'm going to be doing about the most efficient way to lose weight and uh, all the science around it. So if you can do me a favor, please follow my channel. I'm trying to grow my channel in 2024 and uh, I just uh, need your help and support. So please log on to your YouTube account and uh, subscribe to this channel. All right, so uh, we're outside the clinic. It's the same clinic where I did uh, my blood test after that 38 egg challenge. If you haven't seen that video, I've put it in the description. I've also put in the description the, uh, about the insulin carbohydrate model of obesity. Uh, it's a video made by an Aussie doctor, Australian doctor who uh, his, uh, his patient uh, just could not lose weight no matter how much caloric deficit she was running. And then once he got his patient uh, insulin sensit sensitive again, she just lost a ton of weight. So uh, uh, it kind of proves that hormones play a big role in uh, weight loss, uh, not just ca counting calories. Uh, let's get my blood tested and see where my uh, growth hormones are. So I broke my fast at the 58 hour mark and I broke the fast because I got back the lab results which were just absolutely astounding. Um, and I decided I'm just not gonna bother fasting anymore and I just wanted to film the results. <clears throat> and I broke my fast with this meal. It was uh, pan fried uh, chicken heart, uh, pig's liver, uh, caramelized onion, garlic, chili, I have some goat cheese there and avocado. Now, if you look at that meal, it looks pretty tasty, but you might not be used to something like chicken heart and go, oh, that's gross, but it is succulent and so tender and tasty. I would highly recommend you try it. It's not exactly like eating fried cockroach. It is part of a chicken anyway, and you eat chicken, so try it out. It tastes awesome. And I fry all that in butter, it tastes really good. Um, and avocado, oh, obviously I have some onion and garlic in there for flavoring. Um, and I also eat avocado now. It's one of the few plant, uh, plants that I eat. Um, again, when I first uh, cut my weight, uh, lost my weight last year and got healthy, the first month I was just doing carnivore diet. And afterwards I reintroduced um, some plants to my diet. And for anyone who's very overweight and sick, I highly recommend 
uh, that they go on the carnivore diet. I mean, if they've got anything like diabetes, um, cardiovascular disease, uh, an autoimmune issue. I mean, I fixed a skin issue that I had for 20 years. Um, uh, gut issues, um, depression. I mean, even, um, um, you know, mental health issues. Um, if they have brain fog and um, short-term memory loss, which are the first signs of dementia, um, then go on the carnival diet, seriously, because you're getting that from the inflammation from eating too, sugar and too much carbohydrates. Um, so the whole point of the carnival diet is to get off uh, um, carbohydrates, but also get off um, processed foods, the chemicals, and get off the seed oils. But they also very they emphasize getting off plants because um, plants monocrops uh, have a lot of uh, herbicides and pesticides on them, which are harmful to the body, uh, to the gut especially. And uh, a lot of plants just have uh, lectins and oscillates, which you can't cook out completely, um, depending on the plant. And plants are just not that nutrient dense. Now, when I grew up. Uh, I was told to eat carrots for vitamin A and to eat spinach for iron, for example, but the beta carotene in carrots is not easily convertible into vitamin A and only 3% of the iron in spinach apparently is bioabsorbable. Um, so uh, you basically, they will give you the nutritional content in a food item but it is not necessarily bioavailable to your body, right? It cannot actually, uh, your body can't absorb all of it. But at least with um, beef, for example, it will absorb 20% of the iron that's listed in beef. It's only 3% for spinach, very small amount. So you've got to eat a ton of spinach to get your iron and uh, you're exposing yourself to a lot of um, oxalates eating spinach, you've got to cook it thoroughly, okay? So they, you know, in some, um, you know, websites, they say you can even eat spinach raw. Do not eat spinach raw. It will screw you up so badly, right? You have to cook it thoroughly. <clears throat> and um, so I, that's why I got some pig's liver in there. I got 50 grams of pig's liver in there. It's got plenty of vitamin A and iron. <clears throat> In fact, all you need is about 100 grams of vitamin, um, 100 grams of pig's liver, and it'll give you all the vitamins that you need other than uh, vitamin C, which you want to get from citrus fruit. But people on the carnival diet don't even need that because they're not eating carbohydrates, so it doesn't compete for the receptors for the vitamin C. All right, so that's all for diet. Um, the results from the lab, crazy, all right? My baseline is this which was taken in November and the lab results was this. It went up 17 fold, 1,700%. And my uh, human growth hormone was about, you know, 300% the level of the upper boundary of what the humans can have. So clearly my fasting in just 45 hours, plus I was walk walking 18,000 steps a day. So if you doing, exercise and burning your, you use up your glycogen faster than you're going to enter um, ketosis and then autophagy earlier. All right. So for those people who don't know autophagy, I've put the information in the description. Autophagy is basically your body uh, recycling its own cells to get back some of the protein because it's in starvation mode, right? So fasting is starvation, but it's just controlled starvation, right? It's not like you're in danger because you can start eating again at any point. For, for example, for me, at 58 hours, I, was, I got back my lab results and I was just like, wow, this is amazing. I want to film this. I don't want to starve myself anymore. Um, so I just stopped the fast, all right? You're never in danger in terms of fasting, all right? It's not like you're, you're in a concentration camp. Um, oh, but that's another point uh, I want to bring up is if you are fasting, then, uh, you want to add powdered electrolytes to your water and you want to make sure you drink plenty of electrolytes. Otherwise, if you have never fasted before, you're going to, or you go on the carnival diet is the same issue, right? If you've never entered, your body is not used to ketosis. If you're eating too much carbohydrates, you're going to get terrible keto flu, all right? That's just basically 
uh, the mitochondria in your cells, it, the, the energy uh, producing parts of your cells are not used to um, using ketones for fuel. They're used to using glucose. So your cells have to literally recycle all of their mitochondria, die off, and then you need new cells who, which are capable of, uh, or new, new mitochondria capable of using ketones for fuel. So um, you need the electrolytes to reduce the amount of um, uh, you know, keto flu you get, plus you're not getting food, so you still need the source of electrolytes. Um, otherwise, if you're just drinking plain water, you're just going to dilute you know, your system and your electrolyte balance is going to be off. You're going to get cramps and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> if when you're coming out of a fast, you do not want to eat a high carbohydrate load, which is my meal was basically like a ketogenic diet meal. It was just like all meat and, you know, the avocado and some onions, right? <clears throat> if, I'm, if I ate a plate of pasta, pasta, it'll co probably make me feel ill. And that's just after two and a half days, right? The reason being, the carbohydrates will leach the potassium out of your cells. It is why World War II POWs, when they got liberated um, and they were, were refed, um, some of them died immediately because... Um, <clears throat> Unfortunately, the people who refed them weren't weren't doctors, and they they didn't know that uh, they had to control the amount of food they gave to the POWs. Like only a small amount at the beginning, plus you know no carbohydrates, just like proteins and fats. And for those who like to eat vegetables, you can, but you know high you know high fiber, fiber based veg, not like. Um, fruits and stuff with a lot of sugar in it. So uh, my growth hormones were off the charts and part of the reason I even did the experiment was because I had tendinitis in my thumb from deadlifting and doing pull-ups and it feels way better now. It, you, know, you could argue it's a placebo effect that I'm making this up but I uh, do not take any studies that I've um, uncovered in the last few months on face value. I've experimented everything and uh, cross-referenced those studies with other sources like expert opinions, anecdotal evidence. And you, you'll say, you know, well, anecdotal evidence isn't science, but the problem with science is that it can be funded by uh, sources that want to get a certain results. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm eating a lot of saturated fats, um, a lot of cholesterol from eggs in my diet, and I am <clears throat> so healthy now, and um, my cholesterol profile is great. Uh, but, you know, there's studies that say, you know, if you eat a lot of protein and you eat a lot of saturated fats, you're just going to get um, heart disease, and if you eat red meats, you're going to get cancer. That's all funded by processed food companies because they want to keep people eating processed foods and eating plant-based, which is also processed foods <coughs> because processed foods are made from plants. They're made from soy, corn, <coughs> stuff like that. And uh, they're not made from meats because meats you know, can't keep other than, you know, like something like beef jerky. So uh, I always test out the studies on myself. And the study said, if you fast for 48 hours, your growth hormones are going to go up 500%. Well, mine went up 1,700%. I'm sorry to say, but there's no way that is an accident, all right? Even if there's variability in the blood test, there's no way my growth hormones are going to go 3.5 times higher than what is um, capable of doing for a normal human being, right? And my thumb is feeling way better, right? I basically cured a light injury. Uh, so I didn't have to inject the growth hormones into my body like um, like a lot of bodybuilders or MMA fighters do because they want to um, heal up. I just had to go and not eat for two days. So if any of you have small injuries, maybe you want to try it out. Uh, don't eat for two to three days. Um, let me know how you feel and think. And if you could do me a favor, again, please subscribe to the channel. Over the next few videos, I will try to uncover more stuff about um, dieting and cutting weight that a lot of people don't know about. All right.